What's going on guys? Vic here, out here with the old CJ. Some beautiful blue water, some smoke in North Current, so we got great conditions, a live well full of sardines, and we got the two rods out. We got the two flat lines, and then we got a deep rod down there. Adam and CJ crushed the tunas and dolphin yesterday, so hopefully it should be a good day out here. We just had a free swimming dolphin come up to the boat. Did you see where he went? No. You got him? Yeah, that's him. Grab another rod. You got a follower? Uh, there's a follower. Well, that was quick. We're out here five minutes and already got a dolphin in the boat. Dolphin number two. They all looked around the same size, didn't they? Anything Smoked it. Anything for Vic? Aw. Yeah. Come join the party. Oh, he's legal all day. All right, and just like that, three dolphin in the boat. All swam up to the boat, and CJ caught every single one on the pitch dean. That's why it's always important to have a couple of spinners just rigged up with a single hook. You never know what's going to swim up to the boat. Nice. I like the form. And the way we hook these is through the throat. When you hook a bait through the throat, they feel that resistance and they want to swim down and out away from you. Just like that. Basically, we come out here, if you guys are in South Florida, springtime, tuna, kingfish, dolphin, wahoo, cobia are usually the primary targets. And the deeper you fish, the better the likelihood you're going to get tuna, dolphin, walk. The shallower you get, the more bonitas, kingfish, better shot at cobia. Like that two to three hundred foot range in that real deep blue water, that's your best shot at tunas. That was on the deep bait, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's charging the top, isn't it? Gaffer or no? Flipper? It's the best one of the morning. No tunas yet, but lots of action with dolphins so far. Big. All right, guys, first mutton in the boat. I think it'll keep. Yeah, okay. it'll keep. Gorgeous mutton snapper caught by CJ himself. Mutton master. Oh yeah, he is. So we tried drifting a long time. We did like four or five drifts out there, even went out to 300 feet of water. And yesterday, like I said, Adam and CJ, they got a bunch of tuna and dolphin. Those four dolphin that you guys saw CJ catch, that's all we got offshore. A few other miscellaneous hits, but real slow out there. It's close to the full moon, so maybe that might have turned off the pelagics. A big theory with that is if it's a full moon, fish eat all night long and then don't want to eat during the day. But right now, the mutton snapper should be spawning, so that's what we're doing right now. We're anchored up and see if we can make it happen. Sleeping with you. Yeah, on there. There we go, number two. So when you guys hear us say he's sleeping with it or sleeping on it, you gotta remember we're fishing really long leaders. 30 to 50 feet, there's a ton of current. So with that long of a leader, sometimes that mine will have it in his mouth, he'll swim forward or he'll just sit there on it and you don't actually know if he has it because your leader's so long. But you gotta fish a long leader because you see all this current right here. You need to get your bait as far away from your weight as possible. It makes it look more natural. The muns don't like to see that weight bouncing up and down. Oh, look at that hook placement, huh? That one might make it. The one we caught just before. Oh, CJ's tight. 
The one I caught just before was 17 and a half. This one will probably make it to 18. Yes, he just got a nice one on. That's a 20 inch fish, 20 plus inch fish. I mean, we've been here, what, seven minutes and even, yeah. four muttons in the boat? CJ just says it so casually. This is this is the norm in Jupiter Stewart area. It Down really in Pompano, is. you guys know, we struggle with the muttons. But up here, it's the land of the muttons. So sick. So last time I told you guys about CJ's family's company, which is called Ceramlock. It replaces a wax, it's a protective layer but they actually have a really cool product as well where you guys can use it for rods and reels. All right guys, check this out. This rod and reel here is coated with Ceram Lock. It's a coating that's gonna protect your setups and we sell a kit on our website, a rod and reel kit, it's 20 bucks. It's gonna protect your stuff from salt spray, uh, which causes corrosion, the sun, fade, it, if it's faded at all, it'll restore it as well. I will have CJ's site linked below and you guys can save 10% off of that Rod and Reel Kit, use my code Landshark. This man hustles, it's a family business, so check it out and give it a try. Plus you got your own fish to deal with. All very similar sized fish. Personalities, look at that. Me and CJ were talking about it. Imagine a mutton chasing down that sardine. Oh, he ate it tail first. Look at what he did to that bait. That sardine's down there, going like crazy. And you don't set the hook when you first feel that bite. You guys see all those teeth marks. You feel that distinct tap, tap, tap. They'll munch it, they'll run away with it. Give them a little bit. They're not going anywhere. I don't keep. Yeah. Sleeping on it. <laughs> Very sleepy. He was really sleeping on it. I let him sleep on it for about 10 minutes. I think mine was too. Oh, all the fish we've been catching are like 16 to 20 inches. This one's gonna be small. Mustad hook right in the corner of the mouth. As I always tell you guys, save 20% off all mustad hooks. Use my code Landshark, link below. Oh. Big one. You got a nice one. That one's over 20. That's a decent one. See, this is what we're after right here. That's a quality mutton. Look at that bait. See, yours swallowed it head first. Mine was tail first. But look, it's been dead. It came back for the scraps. Another undersized mutton. Same thing, just sleeping on it, just sitting there with that long leader, probably ate the bait and just doing little circles around there. You don't even know they're on there until you go to reel in. CJ has hooked himself a big mystery fish. He thinks it's a big jack, either AJ or Jack Cravel. There it goes. All right, so we're gonna switch spots. This spot seems to be all just barely legal, if not even legal muttons. And CJ just ended the spot with a 30 pound crevasse. I know he's very excited about that very fish. Very excited, a lot of fun. So we threw it back and on to the next spot. Look at the size of this sardine. Wow. That looks like a good fish, huh? Oh, huge mangrove. Look at this thing. Wow, wow, CJ, that's, that's nice, dude. Gave him the sauce. That's a good one. Look, he's got the sauce in his... The barbecue sauce, is that what, that's the that's secret? That's what got him going. The Publix barbecue sauce. See the size comparison of the mangrove to the mountain real quick. 
Look at this. The mangrove versus the mountains. I mean, you are the mountain man. 12 pound mountain. It didn't even pull drag, it's just stayed oh, real it, tight, huh? It, it pulled drag. It's heavy now. Oh boy. Oh, CJ. Oh, wow. Oh, CJ. Oh, boy. That is a large Big Bertha right here. Will XL today. Mm hmm. Wow. That's a spawner right there. Look at that. Hey, nice work, dude. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's a stud. 10 pounder. I give it bigger than that. I, I think it's a, a 12. You don't think so? Might be. You should be holding your fish. That's all right. It's the, he, he catches so many, it's, it's like it's going out of style for him. But look at this. Beautiful mutton. It took us a long time. We've caught like 10 muttons to get this one right here. You guys see those big fish they just want to just dig 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 cj got them 14 pounder it goes between 13 and a half to 15 so we'll call it 14. so check this out this is a just legal mutton snapper which is probably two to three pounds that giant one that cj caught we waited again at the dock when the boat wasn't rocking 14 pounds Gonna fill it up with the old Dexter. This is an eight inch narrow fillet. Beautiful fish. I think muttons might be one of my favorite fish to fillet actually. Right here Got to break through the pin bones over that rib cage, down on the other side. And that's it. One side of your mutton snapper fillet. Now, you guys, a lot of you ask, you know, what's a good all around fillet knife? This is it right here. Eight inch narrow fillet. You can use it on small fish, you can use it on big fish, and it's also a really good knife for skinning fish um, the more flexible a knife is as well if you're just getting into flying fish the more forgiving your knife is going to be the stiffer the blade you're going to have a lot more power but it's a lot easier to mess up when you fillet just like that two sides of your mutton snapper. Now we skin it real quick, and that's another reason I really like this knife is because it makes skinning a breeze. You want a long, flexible, narrow knife, just like that, look. See, nothing left on there. Do the other one real quick, and you guys can save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark, linked below. Bam, just like that. Now all we got left to do the pin bones right here. Got to remove those pin bones. And that's it. We got Mun Snapper for dinner. We'll catch you guys in the kitchen. We're going to whip up something real good, so stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Tonight, we got Mutton Snapper and Mangrove Snapper on the menu. I actually ended up giving the dolphin away to some neighbors, so you guys know we're not wasting the fish. This is a little bit of branch and vine Meyer lemon olive oil. It's a lemon infused olive oil. They are a really cool company out of California. I'm gonna have them linked below. You guys can check them out. A ton of cool stuff, infused olive oils, vinegars, and you guys have seen, we've been using it a lot in the videos lately. And you guys know me. I love garlic and I love garlic powder. And I think you guys have seen over the years with the Catch and Cooks, the Catch and Cooks have gotten more elaborate but the actual seasoning of the fish, I would say, has become very minimalist. I really try to let the fish speak for itself 
And that's something that, you know, cooking with James has really taught me. You know, just a simple pan sear or a simple bake like we're gonna do. And just keep it light, you know, two, three seasonings. Like, for example, we're doing garlic powder, salt and pepper. And I'd say the more important thing is mastering the technique of which you're gonna cook it. Making sure your fish comes out at the right time, making sure your heat's good. That's where your fish is gonna shine. We have some baby pearl onions chopped in quarters by our lovely sous chef. We have some homegrown, beautiful, flat leaf Italian parsley by Brooke once again. Fish going in the oven, 375. We'll see him in about 10 to 20 minutes. I'm not gonna give you an exact time because fish always cooks differently. Your eyeballs are your best friend in the kitchen. Well, we just finished cooking up some pancetta that Victor chopped really, really fine. And then we took it out of the hot oil and then put it on this paper towel just to dry it a little to get drain out any of that excess oil. And then this is going in the microwave just so it stays warm. And a lot of times she's the head chef, a lot of times I'm the sous chef, but we make a good team. I like to keep him organized. Yeah, she does. Without her, I would <laughs> scatter brain all over the place. So check this out. Who knew that there was such a thing as a purple sweet potato? Well, there is. They're not cheap, but they are delicious. So I started out by taking our purple sweet potato, dicing them into smaller pieces, just enough whole milk to cover them, brought it to a boil, cooked 10 to 15 minutes until they're soft, fork tender, drained the milk, immersion blender, immersion blended, finished it off with a little butter, a pinch of salt, and that's it. You don't gotta do anything else. It is amazing stuff right here. We have a little bit left of the pancetta fat. Don't get rid of animal fat. It's the best fat, it's natural, and it's delicious. Quartered baby pearl onions going in to the fat. So, with these, we want a little color on them. I want them to get a little bit brown, get some caramelization going. These are fresh green English peas, which I have blanched and then chilled in some ice water. We're gonna finish those off with air, where it's gonna be a super savory, just bright, um, a lot of flavors. You're gonna have the pearl onion, the pancetta, and the English peas all together. It's gonna be good. Our onions are getting a nice little color on them. Beautiful caramelization on those onions. That's what we want. It really brings out that sweetness when you cook them for a long time. Now we're gonna go in with the English peas. We're basically just gonna heat the English peas back through. You don't wanna move these guys around a lot because they, they're pretty fragile. You don't wanna make mashed peas, you know? Okay, we put the pancetta and the peas in. We got our purple sweet potato puree. You know, food really is art. People talk about it all the time, but I mean, look at this. Look at what nature can produce, the amount of colors and just diversity, you know? A purple sweet potato. Okay, so this is just a little gremolata, so it's minced parsley, garlic, lemon juice, and lemon zest, and that's just gonna be a a little garnish for our fish. Keep it nice and fresh. And then we can just finish off with a little fresh lemon zest. Gorgeous. You know, I didn't eat enough to give you anything else, but it's Absolutely, starting out gorgeous. Yeah. It's delicious. It, um, it tastes every bit as good as it looked. Everything about it is. You're like a chef now, man. This isn't like coming to dinner at a normal, you know, somebody's cooking fish for you. This is like you're a chef. I mean, the the colors, the textures, the flavors, the tastes. It's a. Uh, it's out of control. Aw, thank you. <laughs> Fisher, you're late. I completely agree with my dad, though. Victor's cooking game has just gone 
through the roof to just a whole different plane of existence. So it's everything is just spot on. I feel like I'm eating a five star meal. Mm -hmm. I love these uh, purple oil sweet potatoes. I've never seen them. I've never had them. They're awesome. These are peas. The crispy pinchetta. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. yeah. and I just it all comes together in a beautiful way. Delicious. It is the most beautiful plate I think you've ever made, and it tastes as beautiful as it looks. It is literally so freaking good. Everything goes together so well. It's honestly like, I don't know, almost like speechless. Like it's so amazing. Like you did a really good job. Like, like this is probably one of your top dishes. Wow. Thank really, you. really good. Presentation, 10 out of 10. Taste. I can't even like put it on a scale. Like it's honestly amazing. All the fl you can taste all the flavors and just everything tastes really good. I just don't think I ever eat food of this caliber to even be able to compare it to anything. It's it's definitely very it's up there. It's it's food competition worthy in my opinion. We didn't even try it. <laughs> I I mean, come on. We got six people who said it's good. It's got to be good at this point, right? Um, me and Brooke have been watching a show on Netflix called The Final Table and it's all about like chefs from all over the world and just watching that really inspired me to just, I just love cooking and I love showing you guys at home, I love cooking for these people and it's just so much fun. I really encourage you guys to just get out of your comfort zone and just, just try to do something different, like every week try a different vegetable or, or different technique and you get something like this. I mean, I think it's a really pretty plate. I'm happy to cook for everyone. I wish CJ was here to enjoy this fish with us, but uh, maybe next time CJ. So I wanna thank you guys so much at home for watching. Without you guys, I wouldn't be cooking purple sweet potatoes on camera and making videos about it. So thank you once again, and I'll catch all you guys in the next one.